In today's video, I'm gonna show you the basics of DaVinci Resolve so you can start editing videos today without any prior experience with video editing programs. Let's jump into it. So now let's go ahead and talk about installing and downloading DaVinci Resolve. I've got this website linked in the description down below. It'll take you over to Blackmagic Design's website. After you're there, go ahead and click on free download now. And we're gonna go with DaVinci Resolve 17, mainly because it's gonna be a little bit more stable than a beta version that's currently out there. Let's go ahead and choose which version we want. I'm gonna go with Windows. Fill out your details. This is going to assign a license that you can download. And once it's done that, you won't need to enter any billing information or credit card or things like that. This is just collecting a little bit of data and then click on register and download. Once that's done, right click on the installer, run as administrator, and you've got it installed. Open DaVinci Resolve and you should see a page similar to this. You probably don't have any of this stuff. I would assume not. And all you should probably see is untitled project. If we want to, we can also see a list view. And if we want to manage where our projects are stored, we can actually go ahead and click this and mess with our databases. So I've got a database set up for how-to media of where all of our projects are stored in a separate location from the projects I might just be working on whenever I decide to edit a video every now and then for something other than how-to tech stuff, right? So to add a database, go new to database, give it a name and find the location you wanna put it. So if you have a network NAS like I do, you can put it on your NAS. If you don't and you just wanna put it in a specific folder or say on a specific hard drive, go ahead, select that and all of your files for that project inside of that database should show up there. Whenever you're ready to start a project, go ahead and click on new project and give it a title. We're gonna call this tutorial. After we're done with that, click create and our new project should open up just like that. Now let's go ahead and talk about navigation. Navigation is going to be one of the things for me switching from Premiere that messed with my mind a lot. I have to say after using DaVinci Resolve for quite some time now for about a month and a half, I'm growing to like it more and more because it's just intuitive and that's great. So let's talk about navigating DaVinci Resolve really quick some of the different things that we can click on to open up different context menus. And finally, just putting some stuff into DaVinci Resolve, doing you know simple cuts and edits and dragging stuff around, and then how to render those out. So getting started first, we have our different workspaces down here at the bottom. We have media, we have edit, fusion, color, fairlight, and deliver. We're not gonna be talking about all of these today because some of them are not relevant. And I wanna go ahead and mention that cut is also another option. I just prefer to cut on the timeline. So that's the reason why I'm not gonna be talking about that in this video. Uh, our media tab is going to allow us to locate media from our computer, from our NAS, wherever we're at, whether that's flash drive, whatever, and find media there and add it to our media pool. Our media pool is something that you're gonna see up here that if we go say to the edit tab, we can see media pool by clicking this button. We'll talk more about that in a minute. Our edit tab is our timeline view that lets us go ahead and cut and reposition things around in our timeline. The fusion tab is a more advanced node-based system that lets you do some crazy and cool stuff like setting up templates, going ahead and doing 3D graphics and design and motion. And you can do a ton of special effects and really cool things in here, similar to Adobe After Effects. So it's really nice to see that this is included in the program, let alone the free version of the program as well. The color tab, this is one of the things that caught my interest in DaVinci Resolve in the first place, is that it is a very well-known and well-used program whenever it comes to feature length films and things like that for color grading. And it is amazing. I am by no means a colorist or anybody that tries to act like they know a ton about coloring and making our YouTube videos look the best they can with that. Something I wanna learn about sometime soon. But the whole purpose of this is there are tons of features inside of here for getting your color dialed in accurately. And it's almost an industry standard whenever it comes to the amount of features and things that are in the software. It's definitely leading the pack on that. Fairlight is going to be another tab that we're really not gonna be delving into. Fusion, color, and Fairlight, we're not really gonna to touch in this video, mainly because you can get around uh, DaVinci Resolve without having to use these. It's just really nice to use them. Um, DaVinci Resolve's 
Fairlight is going to give you a ton of audio buses and a ton of audio inputs, and it's going to let you really adjust these things and effects similar to how you would do inside of a DAW software. So think of FL Studio, uh, Ableton, things like that. This kind of gives you some of those features inside of your video editing program, which is super cool. The deliver tab is the last tab here, and they're kind of set up in ways you might want to edit your videos, right? You might want to add your media, cut it up, edit it, add some effects to it, color it, make sure your audio is right, and then go ahead and deliver it. So this is kind of the way this timeline is kind of set up or these uh, different menus and workspaces. Once we're here, we can actually go ahead and do things like render out a project by setting resolutions or using set templates, say for YouTube's 1080p, 4K or 720p standards. You can adjust things like bit rate, frame rate, formats, codecs, all that stuff. You've got a ton of cool things in here. Um, we're not really gonna be delving into this too much, but I just wanna go ahead and mention, if you're making a YouTube video and you wanna render in 1080p, the settings that I would give you right now would be to just go ahead and go with this format. There's probably some better settings and that's something I'm gonna do some more research on to give you guys the best information on that. So if you wanna learn more about DaVinci Resolve, I'm gonna be finding as many answers to your guys' questions as I can, so let me know what they are in the comments section down below. So yeah, simply go ahead, choose whatever resolution you wanna render at, browse, set your location, add to render queue, and then render your render queue. So now that we've talked about all this stuff, let's go ahead and talk about some of the other things that you see inside of here, because navigating DaVinci Resolve is part of the battle if you're coming from any other video editing program, because for me, muscle memory is a thing and I'm used to Adobe Premiere and this is not the same. It's very different in that aspect. So like I showed you earlier, media pool can always be accessed by clicking that button. And there's actually a really cool button over here on the left hand side, which is the shrink button. So if we want to still be able to see all of our timeline, we can. But if we're trying to look for another clip and we really want to see more, we can just click this button and it can hide and ship. So Really cool, especially if you have it dragged all the way out, you can get a lot of clips in here that you can see at a glance, drag it over into your timeline and get it out of the way or just shrink it. So pretty neat. We have the effects tab, which has a ton of things in here that are really, really useful. And there's a really just a lot of things that you can do with these um, that might not seem relevant or might not seem um, available to you just by looking at these natively. But we'll talk about some of that stuff in some future and more advanced videos. Um, but yeah, we've got things like video transitions that we can find through here, quite a bit of those and generators for colors and things like that, and even a ton of effects. Some of the things you might not have access to are some of these advanced resolve effects and that's gonna be available in the studio version. So you'll still get access to quite a few of these things, but like these fusion effects for I think things like binoculars and all this other stuff, you might not have access to. We have an edit index. I'm just gonna be real with you. I don't use this and I haven't seen a need for it for me yet. Depending on your workflow, this may be something that you might be interested in. Let us know in the comment section down below if it's something you know about and wanna share with the class. We'd appreciate it. Our sound library is, once again, I don't think this is that relevant for this video, but you can set up sound libraries and even search them to find, say, sound effects and things like that. We have our mixer, which lets us view our audio at a moment's notice. This is really good for seeing your audio levels. I typically keep the audio mixer on so I can see that. We have metadata, which shows information about the clips. So if we, if we have a clip selected, it'll tell us things like frame rate, resolution. Our inspector is going to give us the ability to adjust video effects, and I'll show you that in a second. So now that we're done with that, let's go ahead and start throwing some clips in here because let's get started, right? If we're in here, we can go ahead and once again, go to the media tab. You can go this way and find the videos and the things that you want to go ahead and add in. For me, I'm not really a fan of adding stuff in this way. I just don't work that fast doing this. And you can add favorites, which is something that would probably speed me up a lot with this. So I could add videos here and even add one for my project files and sections. So this actually might be more useful to me doing this as opposed to using File Explorer. But some video editing programs don't let you do this. So I wanna bring your attention to it. Yes, you can go to File Explorer, find your files and just drag them in. 
that's something you like to do, if that's the workflow you're used to, you can continue to do that here. But I just want to bring to mind that you can do this within the media storage tab. So that's really neat. I'm going to go ahead and drag in one of these clips from Halo. Don't know why I've got it on my computer, but it works for this. So our project has things like frame rates and so does our timelines. Right now, I really don't care about that. We're not going to go into too much in depth things on that. But if you want a dedicated video to setting up your timeline properly and a bunch of other things like that, that's going to be useful. Let me know in the comment section down below. But like I said, we're trying to go through some of the basic features so you can go in here, do a quick edit and utilize that to say have an end product as far as a cut and edited video. So we're going to go ahead and add that in and I'm going to go ahead and add in this other clip here as well. So we've got two clips to work with. Now that I'm done with that, I'm going to go ahead and move over to my edit tab. Once again, if you want to use the cut tab to cut your clips down, that's great. The way I work, I just don't use that and I just don't find that it's useful for myself. Now that we've got that, we can drag our clips down here to the timeline and this is going to go ahead and set our frame rate and resolution and stuff like that of the timeline. Now, if you want to adjust that or if you want to set up your own time manually, uh, you can go ahead and right click, go to timelines and create a new timeline. And once you've created that, you can actually uncheck this if you want to set things like the format, such as the resolution and the frame rate. Go ahead and set that there. But I'm just going to go ahead and take what is with this one. So right click on this timelines, timeline settings, and we can see that it did pull 1080p 60 frames per second, which is what I was recording at uh, with this clip. What we're going to be talking about now is some of the basic settings of DaVinci Resolve. You can move this around on the playhead to see what's going on. If you want this to play back a little bit smoother because say, you know, your computer can't handle it that well, we can actually go to the playback tab and we can check to use optimized media or proxy media and change the timeline proxy mode to half or quarter resolution. This is going to make the quality of it a little bit worse, but it should play back quite a bit better if your computer was having problems playing it back a second ago. So let's go ahead and cut, let's say this section to somewhere around here to cut, we can click this, the blade, or you can press B on your keyboard, select that section and it's cut. Let's say we want to get rid of the rest of this. We can click the selection tool, which is by pressing A or clicking that, selecting that and hitting backspace. This deletes. If you want to move this to the front of the timeline, we can actually click in this negative area, right click and ripple delete. So that's going to move that back to the front. We can kind of scrub through this and say we want to get a clip to there. So I can hit B again to get the blade tool cut there. And let's move forward. Let's say something else cool starts right here. So I can go ahead and hit B blade, remove this. And if I want to hit delete, delete is going to do a ripple delete as well. And it's going to butt those two clips right up to each other. So we can see now if I hold down alt, I can zoom in on the timeline or I can use these controls right here to zoom in and out. And I actually did not notice there was audio, but there, yes, there is audio. These just must be really long clips. So now that we've got these here, let's say we wanted to do a transition between the two. We can click in between the clips, right click, and we can add a cross dissolve. So if we zoom in, I believe, yeah, these clips are really long. So we can see that it does a cross dissolve or you can go to your effects, go to video transitions, and we could do however kind of transition we want to. So I did a smooth transition. We can click on the transition, go to our inspector, and we can change how long our transition is. If we want our transition to be longer, we can set that, and there you go. Pretty easy, right? If we want to adjust things of the clip, say like the, I don't know, the zoom and whatnot, we can adjust those there so we can zoom in and out and reposition things as well. Once again, this is going to be found in the inspector. And that's pretty much it whenever it comes to the very basics of cutting, adding in clips and then exporting. So 
go to the rocket ship at the bottom. And like I said, select whatever resolution you want to use. Go ahead and name your file, set the location. And if you know your platform, go ahead and select that or the format you want to use add to render queue and click render all. So that's going to be all for this video. If you enjoyed like subscribe notifications, all that cool stuff. And if you want to know why we're moving from Premiere Pro to DaVinci Resolve, check out that video right over there. Peace.